Love Child is a documentary out now on HBO Go. It tells the 2010 story of a Korean couple who were so addicted to online gaming that they let their baby starve to death. Of course, that's the bleeding sensational headline everyone seems to be using, and the couple's successful argument in court. Gaming addiction killed our baby. The father was jailed for a year. The mother served no time. It was a success and a precedent in the Korean courts when backed against a wall with, let's say, serious charges of murder or at least manslaughter, people are likely to do nearly anything to escape. Uh, my religion said to do it. I don't know right from wrong. Video games are ruining my life. We've seen countless stories of game addiction in the news before. A man forgot to eat and drink while playing a game, so he died. A woman killed her baby because it was crying too much while she played Farmville. Games! They caused this! This isn't to belittle the point of actual addiction, but a lot of times, and this time I do think is included, games probably play a much bigger role in appealing to people who already have certain issues and are good as a way of showing the symptoms. Love Child doesn't really favor one side over the other. It talks of the couple as not really being mentally stable prior to having a child. The mother never went to the hospital during the pregnancy. They didn't vaccinate their baby or feed her, and when they did, it was with rotten milk. Their home was completely squalid, and the investigator noted they didn't seem sad or remorseful about their daughter's death. When presented with the idea that the mother had no idea how to take care of a baby, the investigator argued that humans naturally learn we need to consume food to survive. It's not something we need to be taught or could really live long at all without knowing. They certainly didn't starve to death themselves. And what about the other detail that gold farming in-game was the couple's only source of income and apparently they hadn't been earning money any other way? Is gold farming the result of game addiction or is it an ill-advised full-time job choice? They were out in 12-hour sessions, much of that time presumably dedicated to gold farming. Is that gaming or is that a more comfortable sweatshop environment? Who would make such a time-consuming, low-profit job choice? Do these sound like symptoms of people who are obsessed with playing games? Or maybe that there might be some other long-standing elements in play? At what point does extremely poor parenting become the fault of video games? At one point in the documentary, we're taken to a gaming addiction rehabilitation center and treated with a therapy scene that looks like it came from Clockwork Orange. Maybe we're going about this the wrong way. What would we do if after the aversion therapy was completed, a new addiction arose? What if they latched onto food, or shopping, or drugs? More fingers were pointed in the story, strangely enough, at Korea's superior internet infrastructure, which allows fast and easy access to not just games, but practically anything web-based. This should be seen as a boon to a nation, not a needle in an addict's arm. Some people are always going to use things in the probably not the intended way, alcohol, cars, but sometimes we have to dig a little deeper at how issues are coming to the surface once we realize that yes, they are indeed coming to the surface. We challenge and reward the gaming industry as it brings us better and better technologies, storytelling and art, but we're so quick to turn the gun on the industry for creating our problems rather than acting as a magnifying glass or a dowsing rod. I'm not saying addiction isn't real. However, I am saying that maybe we should be more careful and respectful of true addiction. Maybe we should be fighting causes, not symptoms.